Motor Vision Super Test. Dream cars pushed to the limit on the racetrack. At the wheel, a man whose family has written motorsport history. Matthias Lauda is the son of Formula One legend Niki Lauda. Five sports cars, five different concepts, prices from 46 to 240,000 euros. Matthias Lauda puts them through their paces on the Saxon ring. Long straights, lots of curves, sudden hills, hidden dips, just the place to check performance. Matthias Lauda, 27 years old, successful in the German DTM touring car series and in GP2 competition, the series for future Formula One racers. He'll see what our five cars can deliver. The newest models of these sports cars would be out of reach for most of us, but second-hand they could be a dream come true. Lauda and his test team are dealing with sports cars of widely differing character from 192 to 500 horsepower. In the Lauda Super Test, the pedigree sports car from Porsche, the 911 GT3. The long distance star, the Ferrari 575M Maranello. James Bond's Aston Martin V12 Vanquish. And the power to weight miracle, the Lotus Exige. Today, the edgy all wheel drive mid motor Lamborghini Gallardo. It's a car he can't wait to get his hands on. The bright yellow Lambo, packed with the technology of the parent company, Audi. With its all-wheel traction, is there a reduction of driving thrills? The Gallardo, watch out when it gets going. The sound of thunder comes not always from the skies. In this case, it comes from a 10-cylinder motor, which theoretically delivers 125 horsepower to each of the four wheels. Yes, 500 in all. The latest generation of Gallardos managed to put out 560 horsepower, but that's not much of a difference. Matthias' car is hardly underpowered. The Lamborghini is really a great car. It has plenty of grip and is, I think, one of the models which comes closest to being a racing machine. Traction problems on anything short of a track covered in grease are not to be anticipated. Permanent all-wheel drive and differential locks front and back, and it's the only model tested which has ESP. Lots of grip, yes. You feel it when you power out of a corner. There's hardly any oversteer because the car lies just right. Unless, of course, you push it really hard. The secret of the edgy design. Few cars boast such a perfect balance of form and function, even if it's not to everybody's taste. A first-generation Gallardo with less than 10,000 kilometers on the clock can be had for just 100,000 euros. And yes, that is tempting. Supercars like the Lamborghini tend to be well-maintained and the technology is robust. And the second-hand price is 70,000 euros less than the latest model. I'm not all that fond of the design. For me, it's a bit too edgy. And another thing, I find the bonnet too short. Makes it look odd, and the back is too long. This is the Lambo's engine. Reminds me immediately of a powerboat. The 10-cylinder motor goes smoothly up through the revs, just fine. That's 500 horsepower. And the sound it makes is fantastic, just like a powerboat. Cool. The cockpit is very, very sporty and actually very simple too. The seats are fine, very low and with good lateral support. You can shift gears like in a Formula One car, upshift, downshift. In first gear you can take to a hundred. 
The gearing is a bit too long though, and it's a pity that the shift paddle doesn't revolve with the steering wheel. When you want to shift in a corner, you always have to reach down. That annoys a bit. Zero to 100 in 4.5 seconds, and without shifting into second gear. Air resistance and engine power hit the optimum balance at 309 kilometers per hour. But the best thing about the car is the suspension. It lies flat as a pancake. All-wheel drive, that holds it down. The only thing you can't do with this car is drift. There's simply too much grip. Because the Lambo is set up for high-speed cornering, not drifting, only when at 4,500 revs, there's the torque of 510 newton meters, does the rear show any sign of breaking away in tight bends. You never have the feel you're going to lose it on fast corners, even at the limit. And it really has an awesome sound. A shame that the Lambo is too loud according to the Saxon Ring's regulations, but when the neighbors cover their ears, it means the driver is lost in an orgy of sound and speed. The brakes feel like those of a racer, just perfect, extremely hard. Even after several laps on a quick circuit, there's no drop off in braking performance. The steering is so direct that you can turn the Lambo on a dime. But what about wet weather? When the track is wet, as it is now, it's still easy to drive. You never have the feeling that a corner is going to be a problem. In conclusion, I can't say I'm a fan of the car's look, but with the Lamborghini you can really have fun on the racetrack, it's a great drive, hugs the asphalt, it's a street car, but one which comes very close to being a real racer. The Lamborghini Gallardo, 1,430 kilos of automobile, which cost 140,000 euros. It's a car offering thrills even for non-experts. With all-wheel drive and ESP, it's a bull which needs no taming. At the end of Matthias Lauda's super test, how do the five models stack up in terms of driving pleasure? The mighty Ferrari is a heavyweight, a classic Gran Turismo, at its best on the highway rather than the race circuit. The same can be said for the elegant Aston Martin with its wonderful sound and the aura of James Bond adventure. The Porsche GT3 is the ultimate racer in our super test. There's nothing to criticize apart from the high price for even second-hand models. In all cases, however, models a few years old can mean saving loads of cash while making drivers' dreams come true. But if money's no object, then it's the Porsche 911 GT3, for sure. On the other hand, the Lotus Exige is a good option for those seeking the sports car experience. Its low weight means that 192 horsepower suffice for plenty of fun at the wheel. New or second-hand, it's a bargain, but one rich in racing feeling.